Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and welcome to my channel. Now in today's video, I'd like to share how I have been learning the Grand Jeu Lenormand by drawing one card at a time and getting to know every element of that card. Now you can draw a single card to gain another point of view on a subject or to simply deepen your understanding of an issue. You can combine a single card with uh, the Petit Lenormand, Tarot, Oracle cards, or any other card system that you already uh, understand fluently, right? Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how I assisted a friend who was discussing a plan with me the other day. Now she's frustrated because her adult daughter expects her to watch her children, take them to appointments, and financially assist her, her unemployed husband, and their four kids. Now my friend does work full time. Okay, well, so does her daughter. All right, now she feels it's time for her daughter to stand on her own two feet and take care of herself. And she was fired up and planning to have what she called a firm discussion <laughs> with her daughter that night. Now, she didn't come to me for a reading, but while we spoke, I was shuffling my Grand Jeu cards um, as I considered the idea of her plan. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because... I think all of my friends uh, at this point know that when they come to me to discuss an issue, they know they're going to get a reading, even though they're not officially coming for a reading. <laughs> How does that work? All right, anyway, um, okay, so <laughs> the card that I drew was the Queen of Spades, also known as the Black Mariah or the Old Maid. Yes, the card game, The Old Maid, was named after the Queen of Spades. All right, so as I explained the card to her, she began to consider the impact that such a discussion might have on the relationship between her and her daughter. So let's look at this card and see what it means, and um, I can uh, shed some light on uh, learning this card system. Okay, so before you get lost in all of the imagery on these cards, get into the habit of focusing on one image at a time. Now, you, you probably want to start with an image that you're familiar with, which is probably the playing card and set. Now, you know, think about when you were, for those of you who read the Petit Lenormand, think about how you felt when you were uh, trying to learn how to read a Grand Tableau. At first, you were completely overwhelmed by all of those cards in front of you. But with practice, you developed a system of working through the spread one section at a time, right? So you want to do the same with these cards. So let's start with the playing card inset because many of you already read cardomancy. You read playing cards. Here's the queen of spades playing card. But even if you don't, Many of you read tarot cards, and the playing cards all are associated with a tarot card. So the first thing you want to notice is the, uh, the suit of spades. The spades equate with the tarot swords and reference serious thought, trials, and conflicts. Now, the queen of spades in cardomancy is known as the widow card. It refers to an ambitious, skillful, intelligent woman. Now, the, the corresponding tarot card would be the Queen of Swords, who is also referred to as an intelligent and independent woman. She's quite the realist. But this Grand Jeu card gets much more specific. Overall, it refers to loneliness and sadness brought on by loss or separation. It's not a very happy card, and yet there's an underlying suggestion that it's time for one cycle to end, and with time and support, a new cycle will begin. It also warns the seeker to be prepared to lose someone close to them, or it may ask the seeker if they are prepared to lose someone close to them. So let's start by looking at the main image. Let me get these two out of here. So. Um, you aren't confused by them. I also want to show you what I've been doing. Like this is my cheater deck, my learner's deck. Um, 
So I've been writing all of my little meanings um, on this, and I have the whole deck completed now, so I can do a reading. This is the card I drew when I was talking to her, um, because I, I don't know everything yet. You know, I, I need to be reminded of what all these little things mean. So this is what I've been doing. I know you can get um, a, a what digital download, it's called, right, on Etsy of all of the Grand Jeu cards that you can just print out. And for those of you who know how to do such things, you can have them printed on cardstock, I guess. I, I don't know how to do things like that. But because I have uh, so many Grand Jeu decks, I just took one. This this one happens to be Erna Drozbeck's deck. Um, I, I just took one of my decks and I made it into my learner's deck. Okay. All right. So let's look at the main image. Here we see Isis guarding the body of her, if you can see him down here, of her uh, husband and brother, Osiris. <laughs> yes, that happens all over Greek mythology. <laughs> I guess there weren't enough people back then, so everybody was marrying their siblings and what have you, their parents, yeah, okay. Anyway, so Osiris was killed by his brother Seth. Now this is a story of death and rebirth. Now, the Egyptians considered Isis to be the most pure, passionate, and, and pious creature in the ancient world. The god Seth, after killing his brother Osiris, cut up his body and hid the pieces all over Egypt. While overwhelmed by grief, Isis is divinely inspired to find all of the pieces of her husband to put him back together, right? Now, with the help of Anubis... Osiris is then recomposed and becomes the guardian of the dead and God of resurrection. So this myth represents the certainty of rebirth to eternal life thanks to infinite love, which unites the creator to his creatures. I love that. All right, so let's look at all of the elements on the card. Here we have the letter U which adds the ideas of dedication and sincerity, as well as independence within relationships. Now, this really ties in with the context. We have a mother who wants her daughter to be more independent, but she knows she must approach the subject carefully while remaining dedicated to pursuing her cause. The geomantic symbol, not every card has one, but many do. There, there it is. The geomantic symbol, uh, symbol is uh, Letitia, which refers to harmony and benevolence. And I was already seeing the broader picture of the situation. Just, just with that, those, just with the letter and the geomantic symbol, right? The seeker wants peace of mind and wants to maintain harmony with her daughter. She wants to maintain some level of benevolence, right? Now she was thinking of how to find balance and harmony between her benevolence and maintaining some level of independence and separation from her daughter, right? Okay, so now the constellation is the Southern Cross and it adds the idea of maintaining trust while undergoing a difficult course of action out of a sense of obligation. Now, as a mother, she does feel a sense of obligation to her daughter, and she wants to maintain trust. Already, she's, she decided not to speak to her daughter until she, she had more time to think things through more th thoroughly, just, just by me discussing these, these few things with her, right? Now, overall, this card suggests an ending of dark times allowing for the return of better times, but it cautions against overly vigorous actions. All right, we're gonna get down here now. Um, the warning of this card is that harsh or abrupt action will lead to separation and loneliness that will be quite painful. And that hit the nail right on the head. That's really all the seeker needed to hear, right? That warning against abrupt action because it will lead to painful separation, all right? So if we look at these small images down here, we see a solitary man in a, uh, what's that called? Like a dressing gown, right? And he's about to sit at a table to write maybe a letter. Um, I call it the cold and lonely side. <laughs> and on the right, we can see a woman who is, she's lying back with a blanket over her. You can see she's warm and comfortable. Um, and she's uh, being um, 
warmed and comforted and consoled by uh, Sister Mary Sunshine here, who is offering her um, some advice or, you know, just consoling her, right? So in both cases, no one is going anywhere. No one is taking aggressive action, right? If we look at these small images as a painful separation and a loss of friendship on the left and taking time to console yourself or maybe um, talking things over with someone who will provide moral support on the right. We have the flowers in the middle to offer a balancing point by suggesting that comfort will be found by maintaining faith that things will work out while preserving the sacred mother-daughter bond, okay? The flowers are, are always um, sitting down here between the two small images, right? And they are um, a balancing point between them. And they, they very often appear as advice. Now, the message of these flowers on this card um, is that a, a um, or the pain represented by this card will be difficult to erase if the seeker doesn't consider the idea of impiety, impi no, impiety, <laughs> however you say that. It's a lack of reverence for, for something that's, that's considered sacred, okay? Um, now, she needs to consider the sacred bond between the mother and child, right? The seeker needs to consider that. That's what these flowers are saying to her. The flowers also bring the message of maintaining faith in that which is sacred, okay? So this single card provided greater insight into the situation and was all that the seeker needed uh, to change her course of action. It, it led her to realize that this is a very delicate matter and that their their um, talk, their talk <laughs> that they were going to have could easily turn into a fight, I just, I know it would have, about the husband who hasn't maintained a job during their entire relationship, which is really at the heart of the seeker's frustration. Uh, she just, she wasn't seeing that, but that really was at the heart of it, all right? So she now knows that she needs to come up with a more creative solution to her problem, and she's willing to take the time to find one. Maybe she'll go and talk to Sister Mary Sunshine. So for you professional readers watching, you you could suggest another reading to a, a someone in this situation, right? Um, to, to find a better solution to the problem or, or you might lay um, a six month grand tableau to see if things will improve without the seeker's intervention. I mean, you can think of all the ways you could go with this um, that uh, would all be uh, started by uh, this single grand jeu card. Okay, that's it for today, my friends. Stay tuned for more Grand Jeu Lenormand videos. I'm just getting warmed up. Um, and uh, until next time, I'll see you in my Facebook group. And for now, go and start playing with your Grand Jeu cards. Bye, everybody.